Hello there, everybody. My name is Lou Whelan, and um, for almost three decades, uh, that number is scary, I've been publishing the Community Profiles magazines that are distributed by the First Multiple Listening Service. And um, they, there are five publications for different parts of town, and we cooperate with um, other organizations in publishing these, including the North Fulton Chamber of Commerce, the Gwinnett Chamber, the Cobb Association of Realtors, and they are distributed by, um, on behalf of the multiple listing service or, or by the multiple listings for FMLS, and they are distributed in real estate brokerage firms and um, chambers of commerce and at the three FMLS stores starting in February. Again, we temporarily stop with COVID, but the new issues are coming out in, in this month. Today's the first of the February, so... Um, be on the lookout for those in your brokerage firms, and they're pretty comprehensive, a lot of interesting information about all the changes. And I'm also a commercial realtor with KW Commercial, and I focus primarily on investment properties such as multifamily and strip malls. So um, if I can help you with that, I um, or also even single-family homes. But anyway, the website for the magazines is uh, atlantacommunityprofiles.com and we have on that website you will also be able to see this show along with uh, archives of other shows including uh, the presidents of the chambers and uh, uh, of commerce and other civic uh, and you know political leaders community leaders so long, a great deal of information it's a great resource for information about Atlanta so today um we have uh, the privilege of having Jeremy Crawford back on the show for the first time in 2022. And um, so welcome back to the show, Jeremy. It's awesome to have you back on the program today. And Thank you so much, Lou. It's great to be here to kick off the new year of 2022. You have been a busy guy uh, since the last show and the last time we talked, which... Um, and it's hard as a real estate agent to keep track of all the innovations and improvements and changes, but they're all greatly improving our business and our ability to serve our clients. And um, as a result, uh, so anyway, let's just, uh, maybe you could give us a feel for 2021 and um, and, and uh, not only in terms of um, numbers of brokers and agents, but of course, then we'll shift to information that will profile the the uh, in the, the housing industry. So, and then we'll talk about the tech technologies. So we have like a lot to cover: new technologies, so and new products and services. So, so Jeremy, let's talk a little bit about the industry, the brokers and the agents. What I know, there's been a lot of uh, increase in number of people involved in the industry in the metro area. Yeah, absolutely, Lou. We've seen, you know, historic increases. We've had uh, in 2021, we had more brokers join FMLS than ever in our 57 going on 58 year history. Um, we ended up the year with over 56,000 subscribers comprising of brokers and agents as well as appraisers and that's the fourth largest mls in the nation lou and we were up nearly 14 percent compared to 2020 for the number of broker and agents a record for fmls um and and really industry-wide lou we've seen a lot of growth overall in the national association of realtors even surpassed 1.5 million realtor members of the trade organization, which is a record high for them. And it's been a very impressive year to see how many brokers and agents have joined in doing residential and commercial real estate, obtained their licenses in the state of Georgia. And with Atlanta being, you know, one of the hottest markets out there in metropolitan areas in the United States, we're seeing a lot of brokers and agents from other states join FMLS and start setting up businesses to do brokerage services here in Atlanta. And I'm assuming, Lou, you hear some of that in your commercial space as well. Yeah, actually, um, as different aspects of the commercial are on fire 
such as multifamily and warehousing and um, other and others are not on as far as much but of course investment property is is on fire but let's get a, a handle on 2021 and uh, in review tell us a little about what happened if you would yeah absolutely you know one of the biggest uh, ask i always have is what's the market doing What's it going to do? Uh, what are the stats? And I like to focus on the stats, knowing I'm not an economist. We have a lot of great economists in our market area in Atlanta. Um, so I don't like to predict the future because I'd be retired if I was able to do so. But I love to talk about what we saw in, in 2021. And I'm going to show all of our viewers here firsthand just how the market performed with FMLS so they can really see some real world statistics here, Lou. We actually even in a challenging inventory time, because we know inventory is at an all-time low, we had over 102,000 units closed in 2021. That was up 10% compared to 2020. I know we're coming off of some COVID challenges, but 2021, we continuously heard low inventory, but closing over six figures of listings up, you know, that much is amazing. And then Everyone likes to take a look at the average sales prices out there in the industry, Lou, because with low inventory, supply and demand is driving those prices up. And we saw for residential attached listings that go up from 286000 on the average sales price all the way to three twenty-five. dollars That's nearly a 14% growth. And if we looked at detached listings, your, your standard standalone residential homes out there, we saw that jump from 348K all the way up to 413K at the end of 2021. That's an 18.7% increase year over year in the numbers of the average sales price for detached units, Lou. And as we look at the inventory that's out there and we talk about that, in days on market, we actually closed out last year with a little bit of an increase on the number of days on market. On the median side, we got down to eight around the August and September time frame, but we ended the year at an, a median days on market of 12 um, for the attached listings. And for the detached listings, we ended at a very low median days on market of nine. And how does that take a look at our month's supply of inventory? As you can see here, the past three years, you know, this time three years ago, we were bouncing around the three to three and a half month time frame of inventory. If there were no new houses on the market for sale, then how quickly would we sell out? And from a residential detached perspective, you can see down here, Lou, that we are one month supply on residential detached listings right now. And on the attached, we're seeing the same amount of decline and it's under one month supply. So we are still heading in to 2022 to unprecedented levels of inventory challenges out there for the many brokers and agents. 2021 was the first time that there were more agents listing properties than there were properties to be listed in the United States. Uh, usually there's more properties than agents. and Last year's inventory challenge nationwide saw the, the script flip on that a little bit, Lou. So some of those information right there available. I know we have some FMLS members that do watch your show. And these are free member benefits, statistical tools that they can access right there from FMLS.com. And for those guests, I'm always happy to send out any statistical reports and provide these informations out to them directly, too, if they're interested in that, Lou. Yeah, well, if you can... Um... If you'd like to uh, review this show, it's going to be on my website, atlantacommunityprofiles.com. And um, also, let's, let's talk a little bit about the uh, what's new at FMLS. We, we don't have a lot of time. I know you could probably spend a few weeks on <laughs> that. But, <laughs> but um, just tell us a little bit of what's new at FMLS and overall the industry. It's... It's pretty overwhelming what all the phenomenal improvements and te new technologies that you brought to the table in just a few years. Yeah, well, Lou, I, I like to focus uh, this show a little bit on what's going on in the industry in general. 
is we have seen a lot of merger and acquisition activities in the world. Uh, 2021 was not only unprecedented year for average sales price growth, historic low inventories, but we've seen a lot of private equity firms come into our industry that we all know as a family, Lou, and come in to disrupt the industry through a lot of acquisitions, as you've seen in other industries, the gaming industry. And so there has been a massive onslaught of companies, M&A private equity firms, buying prop tech companies, buying real estate technology companies. And and we've seen that uh, this past year like no other. There's been so much money that has been fueled in that. And for us in providing products and services out, you know, it's very concerning to us to see a company that we know and love with a great set of tools for our brokers and agents go off to a private equity firm that really is focused on buying and selling that. And so as such, we did last year form partnerships with Miami, Austin, and Kansas City. We formed MLS Technology Holdings LLC, which you can get more information about at the website of bettermls.com. And essentially we forged partnerships to actually acquire and invest in one of our top platforms, which is Remind. And Remind provides transaction management for all of our brokers and agents as a membership benefit, electronic signature, prospecting tools, the ability to farm. It has all of the tax data in the entire nation available with it. And we just launched in December of last year the single sign-on platform that's going to give our brokers and agents custom branded dashboards to their own brands to help them to combine access to the products brokers provide alongside of what we provide with FMLS. And so for us, it's really taking back control in an investment perspective with partnerships, and we're very excited about that. And then, Lou, as you know, and we've, we've spoke about, we're serving about 700 MLS members in Macon, Georgia at the Middle Georgia MLS with a partnership we formed at the beginning of last year, we launched that. And then during last year, we formed a new partnership with the Mobile Alabama MLS, the Greater Gulf Coast MLS, with nearly 2,100 subscribers. And as of two weeks ago, Lou, we actually completed that partnership and we're now hosting all of their technical MLS operations for them. They're getting access to the same products and services FMLS members have. And fortunately for FMLS, Lou, all of our brokers and agents now have full access right there within FMLS to all the properties in Mobile, Alabama. And so this year for us, Lou, is one we like to say is about partnerships. We know as brokers, you're competitive, but you're also cooperative in the real estate transaction. And we want to be cooperative as well with what we're doing with partnerships. And so while we haven't sent a press release out yet, Lou, I'm happy to announce we have inked another partnership with Birmingham. And we're going to be doing a partnership with Birmingham so all of their brokers and agents have access to the same spectacular Remind platform that FMLS agents and brokers have access to. And we're going to be doing a data share with Birmingham as well, so that we send all of the Atlanta MLS data over into the Birmingham MLS and vice versa to create a better referral network between our two autonomous organizations. And so really, we're excited about that, Lou. We launched Mobile, we launched Middle Georgia, we're looking to launch Birmingham. And it's all about the data, Lou. As you know, better than anyone, access to the data is key. And we no longer see ourselves as an Atlanta MLS, but an MLS that needs to partner outside of Atlanta to help the entire South because there's so much relocation going on anymore. Those agents in Birmingham, those agents down in Mobile, Alabama, and all other the all over the place need access to Atlanta and vice versa. So we're really happy about the partnerships we forged and trying to grow more data for the brokers and agents as a priority this year, Lou. Well, so as as if that's not enough, Jeremy. What about uh, <laughs> what about the uh, this year? What's coming? Anything else you'd like to elaborate on or address at this time? Well, for sure, being the partnerships and growing the data that's available for our brokers and agents, Lou, we're going to have more partnerships announced this year. 
Uh, we are actually expanding into doing partnerships, hopefully this year in Tennessee and Florida. We're hoping to expand on what we're doing in Alabama. You know, we have our great FMLS Training Institute that provides CE accredited training. So agents like yourself can keep your license renewed in Georgia. That's now accredited in the state of Alabama. And our training institute is now actively working on getting certified in the state of Tennessee. So technically speaking, you could be sitting up in Rome, Georgia. You can take a three-hour CE accredited class from our expert trainers. And you can get CE accredited training all at one time for both Alabama and Georgia. And coming soon will be the state of Tennessee. And then we will look to be doing more announcements from that perspective. And Lou, we don't want to stop there. So if there's any of my peer associations or MLSs listening to us today, all in the Southeast, we're trying to build a better data silo out there for the brokers and agents to have access to. And we're looking to continue the conversation and grow the partnerships and know that the MLS is working together, even though the brokers do compete with each other, you work together. And we see our MLS is working together for the greater good of our core mission, which is helping brokers transact real estate, Lou. And that's really what we're looking to do this year in the short term um, from that perspective. I would not be the bit surprised if a lot of agents um, made application or took the test or whatever is involved to get licensed in some of those states. I know I've been um, working with some people in Tennessee on some investment properties and it does, uh, it would be probable for me to get licensed in other, some of these surrounding states. Have you have you had much inquiry into that or discussion on that? Do you think people will be motivated to get more involved in that way or not? I, I think so. I think the inventory challenges are pushing brokers and agents to look for inventory in other areas. And And when you look at the position of Georgia being so close to the borders of Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Tennessee, they're starting to look. And as I talk to a lot of our broker and agents that are members down in Fayette, a lot of them are actively pursuing getting their Alabama license and working to grow their brokerage business and their inventory options. And when you look in areas such as Cartersville and Rome and Dalton and Northeast Georgia, you know, a lot of them are actively licensed in multiple states because you're so close to more than one state and your market area is a little larger. We don't really see a lot of our brokers and agents doing direct business in areas like Mobile, Alabama. That's where we look at referral networks between seasoned agents and brokers that know the local market area in Mobile, and they can refer business back and forth between Mobile in Atlanta and those type of arrangements. But when you're looking at our bordering areas, Columbus, Georgia, Noonan, Coweta areas, a lot of those agents are actively pursuing their licenses in those close by states, if you will. I think that's going to continue to grow. And so the partnerships that we're doing with those MLSs in Alabama and beyond are really helping those brokers and agents have easy access to all of the data in the markets that they're wanting to work in. You know, we hope that they will use the markets correctly, Lou, and not look at doing business in markets they're not that familiar with. But as close as we are to Alabama, we see a lot of opportunity for our brokers and agents to go over there. And we welcome a lot of the brokers and agents from those MLSs to come work with FMLS as well and be licensed in the state of Georgia. And our partnerships with all these MLSs, Lou, provide free CE accredited training for all of them. So all of Birmingham agents, all of Mobile agents, anyone we partnership with as an MLS, they're free to use our FMLS Training Institute at no cost at the same time. Jeremy, that's especially true in commercial real estate. I I sold some apartment buildings up there in um, November and December in Cartersville and Dalton, Calhoun and Cartersville and... um, there's a tremendous amount of connection between Tennessee, Chattanooga, and you know, in Tennessee, between in those markets, and I'm sure that's true on all the border cities of our of uh, the state. But, 
particularly true, and I know FMLS is providing more and more information to commercial agents um, for investment property. Can, are you focusing on that, or where, what, um, what can you tell us about your involvement with helping agents with commercial properties? Yeah, absolutely, Lou. We had a lot of activity, actually. We've added, a, you know, more support for commercial listings, especially commercial lease listings out there. And just looking at the statistics, Lou, we had over 2,300 uh, commercial leases in the system last year. And we just launched that not too far below that. And we also had a lot of residential rental activities. We had nearly 14,000 residential lease properties, properties leased through FMLS last year. So we're focusing on helping grow the lease activity on the residential side, which helps bridge the gap at times with inventory challenges and also helping commercial brokers like yourself get the commercial listings out there on the thousands of destinations that we help syndicate those listings for you at your discretion of choice out there. And so it is a value proposition to the brokers and agents. Uh, it's much cheaper to use FMLS than the mega commercial counterpart, if you will. And I think you know who I'm referring to. And so FMLS has a very big market area of advertising for commercial lease properties and destinations for those commercial leases and full support for that. And we, we continue to grow that. And, and also in those outlying areas, Lou, we've started to expand our store footprint. So we now have expansions of our store that are going up in Cartersville and Rome area that are going down to Fayette area. We've already launched a uh, store pickup locker location in Dahlonega, and we've launched one out at Walton Borough Association of Realtors. And so many people that are familiar now with the UPS, Home Depot, and Amazon pickup lockers, so you're not tied to picking up your lock boxes and supplies from eight to five. We're putting those all around the Atlanta metro area. And so we have two live and two going in very soon. And we're looking to continue to expand that as well so that you don't have to drive all the way into Sandy Springs. If you're all the way up in Cartersville, you know what a drive that is. We'll be helping deliver those type of supplies to you, be it residential or commercial, much closer to you there right on the spot at those pickup lockers that are self-service and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, Jeremy, can agents in in Alabama and Tennessee and Florida join FMLS or become members of FMLS and get access to all the data that we provide? Absolutely, yes. As long as the broker is also licensed in the state of Georgia, you know, we've we've got brokers all the way in Alaska that are FMLS members. Uh, a lot of those are relocation specialists or luxury home or second home buying market specialist out there. So as long as the broker is licensed in the state of Georgia and their agents are licensed in the state of Georgia, then they can join uh, no matter where they are. I think last month, Lou, we had six brokers from outside of the state of Georgia join us as a Georgia licensed broker that are now an FMLS broker member with all of their agents that are licensees. So we continuously see that growing and we see that every month. And as we grow the data that's available to our subscribers, we see the ability to continue to grow brokers and agents in our membership from all over the nation, Lou. I'm sure that's especially true, as I said earlier, with commercial properties, investment properties, apartment buildings, warehouses, because, because of our Port Authority activity, we have a phenomenal amount of business um, in the warehouse industry, and a lot of people outside of the state of Georgia are interested in getting involved in investing in that industry. So anyway, I'm sure there are more and more involvement. There will be a lot more in, in, as that grows, too, now with Covington and Rivian and everything going on over there. That area is just on fire, and I'm, it's, just, it's attracted the interest of investors n worldwide, not just you know, next states next to us. And I'm um, partic particularly interested myself in Covington. That is just an amazing area over there, what's going on. Every day we hear something new. But lastly, Jeremy, I wish you would just 
remind people how phenomenal your support staff is and what a great group of people you put together. And I have to tell you that it compares extremely well, better than any other support staff that I know. So I would like to just do a shout out to that group of people. It's amazing, you know, that they can do such a wonderful job and they're always available to help. And what a phenomenally good attitude they have. Yeah, we are very fortunate to have a great customer support team at FMLS. Uh, we even have the ability to take technical support calls in other languages now. So we're, we're supporting other languages as well. Every help desk call, chat, or email is followed up by a survey, Lou, as you well know. And last year, we were averaging 7,500 inquiries a month, and we never dropped below a 92% satisfaction rating. And that's in light of us launching a whole bunch of new products and services. And sometimes those launches don't go as well as planned. So the fact that we never got below 92% customer satisfaction rating is a raving testament to them as to how good of a job that they do. They're available on Saturdays as well. And the MLSs we partner with, like Mobile, they have access to the exact same staff that's educated to helping them just like they educate and help our Atlanta agents here with anything that they need on top of the awesome training department we have and everyone administratively behind them does a wonderful amount of job. And we've been doing this, Lou, with a still hybrid work environment just to keep everyone as safe as possible from the COVID pandemic while they're providing the stellar service. So I thank you for your compliments for our team. Glad to hear it from you because you, you know, have real world experience and hope to help all of our MLSs elevate what they're doing in the industry to help our brokers and agents out there. Yeah, you're right, Jeremy, particularly because of my age and uh, with these, everybody is 30 years younger than me. So, and the technology is, a, they're much better with technology. So believe me, I'm <laughs> in regular contact with the support team, but anyway, Thanks very much, Jerry, for all you do and for the great job in 2021. And we look forward to a phenomenal year in 2022. And uh, thank you, Donna Davis, for uh, pro broadcasting and producing this program with uh, Pro Video Talent. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Thank you all.